Welcome to our support vector regression course. This is our machine learning project about home appliance energy consumption. Today, we are going to examine our features and also we are going to examine our assumptions. Before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and don't forget to select all, like this video, and share this with your friend. So, let's get right into our job. If you could still remember, we have actually benchmarked our assumptions and this assumption has something to do with which one can be considered low consumption and which one can be considered high consumption. And with that, we have set our benchmarks into 1 hour and 30 minutes. But as we go along with our discussion, with our processing of this machine learning project, we would be able to understand why we use this DF hour. So please don't forget to watch all the videos about this machine learning project. So we're going to make a plot of these time intervals, the one hour and the 30 minutes. So let's right here examine our assumption. And of course, we first have to plot the 30 minute time interval. So let's have PLT. So this is good to go. And here, remember that our fig size is set to 16.6, but actually in your case, you can also make your own size. It's your choice. And our X label is date and our Y label is appliances consumption in WH. So let's run this. And now we have this one. So as you could see, the values are very much closer to each other. There are actually a lot of values to consider in this plot. And that is why taking a close look at this plot, it would be harder for us to understand what's really going on. Now, let's compare this one to our one hour. Let's just copy paste this one. All right, copy. And then let's paste that here. And let's change this one to hour. And everything is still the same with the 30 minute. Let's execute this. And here we go. So in comparison to our one or 30 minute, this one is actually having a very slight difference because the values are not that very close to each other. But still, if this is the kind of thing that we're going to use for our presentation, then this can bring us a lot of confusion because the things here are not very, very clear. If we are going to examine which part of the day has the highest consumption, then we would not be able to understand. If we're going to ask ourselves which week of the month has the most or the highest consumption of energy, then we can never tell. So the best thing to do is that we're going to use group by. So that means we're going to use per hour, per weekday, and per week of the month. So we would be able to see the comparison and the differences with respect to the energy load consumption. So we're going to define here some functions. So let me write here first. So functions to be used for the plot and we're going to define them. So let's have first. So here we are defining the functions daily, the hourly, and the monthly so that we can plot the daily, the hourly, and the monthly daily consumption of the appliances. So this is good to go. And here we are actually getting the mean. So when we execute later on the plot for each one of them, then we will get, or this will return the mean for the weekday, the hour for the weekday and for the month, right? So let's execute this one. So we've got a mistake here and okay, I see we forgot to use the close parenthesis. It's good to go. And let's run this once again. All right. So we have just defined our function and after defining our function, what we will do is that we're going to plot each one of them so we could clearly see the trend. Let's start first with the per hour of the day basis. So let's name this one. So the plot energy consumption per hour of the day, right? So now, what we will do is we're going to have this. Okay, so we're going to use this one to understand the energy consumption per hour of the day. That means from the first hour going to the 24th hour. And for that, we use here the range 0, 24, 1. And I'm sure you know this one. So let's execute this. Now we have here. So let's examine the consumption per day or per hour of the day. So there is a very significant increase of the consumption from the 15th hour going to the 18th hour and from this point going to this point the consumption is actually 
very much high. Actually, it starts from this point, okay, going to this point. The consumption is really very much high. And maybe you would like to ask me, what would be the reason? The logical conclusion for having this kind of output is that during this time, people are really very active. People are using lots of appliances. But during this time, people are at homes, at their respective homes, and they are using a lot of appliances. A TV, for example, refrigerator, air conditioner, and so on and so forth. Of course, the expected result would be the energy consumption is really very much high. And here, from this part going to this part, this is the time when people are already resting. They are already sleeping. So that is why the consumption is very low. So they are not using many home appliances. So that's the reason why. So after having investigated the per hour energy consumption, what we will do is we're going to now make the examination of the energy consumption per day of the week. So let's go to this one. Let's label this energy consumption per day of the week. So we will have daily. So now in this case, what we do here is that we color each day so we can properly distinguish one from the other. So pink for Monday, red for Tuesday, and so on and so forth. So we are good to go. Let's execute this one. So let's have, all right. Now, as you could see in this case, we have the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are the days which have a bit higher of energy consumption in comparison to, or in comparison to Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The logical conclusion is that during this time, most, or during these days, most people are at home. Unlike during these times when people maybe are out, they're working or whatever thing they do outdoors. The next thing to do is that we're going to validate if our findings during this time and during this time are consistent. So for us to see this kind of validation, we're going to use the per month basis, the daily of each week and for per month. And so that we could see if this is really correct, right? here first and once again everybody in this case we are getting here the mean energy consumption so let's have this one so in this part of our project what we do here is we are using or we use the heat map so we would be able to understand how each day of the month behaves so let's execute this one so that we could see or anyway here we are actually just having January, the February, the March, April, and May as our months which are considered for this analysis because other months of the year are not having data. So that's why we only have these months which have the present data. So let's execute this and that we could properly see. Now we have this one. So from the highest to the lowest energy consumption. So let's remember this that we have the Monday, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that have the highest energy consumption in comparison to Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So let's see if that is really correct. The month of January, we have Saturday and Sunday. That's correct. For the February, we have Monday. For the month of March, we have Monday. For May, we have Friday. For, I mean, for April, sorry. Then for, we have the month of May, we have Friday and Saturday. So this is really true. This confirms or validates that our result here is really very much correct. But then again, our concern for this feature is that we only have one, two, three, four, five months. And because we could not really see the clear picture of the months for the whole year, then this feature months cannot be considered for our modeling. And so because it cannot be considered for our modeling, we're going to resort to per hour or per 30 minute time interval. But that is still subject to our test that we will do later on in our project. What we're going to do is we're going to examine our home appliance consumption using a histogram. So let's have histogram of home appliance and I will tell you why we're going to use this one. We're going to have this after we have the code executed. So let's have this here. 
we have the histogram of our appliance home consumption before the trans log transformation takes place. And here we have the histogram of our appliance consumption after the log transformation is applied. So let's remember this that in the earlier part of this project, we have transformed our data from its raw form going to the log transformed form. So the, our reason for this transformation is that there are a lot of values which are too high in comparison to those values which are within our five number summary. So that is why we use our log transformation feature. So let's execute this and we could properly see. So this is the picture of the before the transformation and this is the picture after the transformation. So as you could see, it is very much skewed to the right and this is not actually normal. And when our data is not that normal, then if we are going to use this raw form in our modeling, we would not be able to get the proper result. Remember that in regression analysis, we always assume that our data is normal. And so with that, we use here the log transformation. So maybe you would like to ask me, is this really very imperative or very important to consider this part of the process? Actually, this part of our process may or may not be included, but I have just included here so that we could properly see what's going on between before and after. This time, we're going to understand the different correlations of the different features so that we would be able to identify and select the most relevant features to be used for our modeling. So to do that, let's first label this person correlation among the features or variables. Okay, so to do that, let's first have this. So we're going to use this to identify the correlation of the different features to the log appliances. And this is what we are most concerned about. And we're going to choose those which have the most or the highest correlation value. So let's execute this one. And let's wait for a few seconds, if not a minute of the processing. So let's have this. This is the result now. And based on this result, then we could see that the features with high correlation value are the hour here. Then we have the lights. We have the T6. Then we have the T2, which is 0.22. We have the T3. We have the T out. Then we also have the RH out. We have the RH8. Then we have the wind speed. However, correlation alone is not our metric to use a certain feature or variable for our modeling. So the most important thing here is that we're going also to check whether there is linear independence in some of our features because using this, we will also be dealing with multicollinearity issue and this is one thing that we have to avoid in our modeling or else our model will fail. So let's right here examine linear dependence. So let's have, so in this case, uh, what we will use here for this kind of examination are those features which have higher correlational value. So let's have, so here we used our T6, T2, RH2, lights, hour, T out, wind speed, T2 point for considerations as candidate variables for our modeling. And let's examine their linear independence and let's execute this let's wait for a while so now guys we do have the results of our processing and here we actually have some things to consider and once again let's remember this that we have to avoid multicollinearity and because the temperatures in and outside are correlated with t2 point this one t2 point and our temperature t out and also the temperature here, T2 and T, T6 and T2 are also correlated with the T2 point. So, which means that there can be an issue of multicollinearity if we're going to use all of these temperature variables. So what we will do is that we're just going to choose one. So here at this point, if you are a data scientist doing this kind of analysis, then you only have to choose one. And for this, we're going to use only the temperature inside house for our modeling. And of course, we also have to use the 
the temperature and humidity from the room. So for this part of our project, what we have done is that we've examined our assumptions and also we have examined our time features which are daily, weekday, and monthly. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We have a lot of free data science lessons for all of you. We have machine learning algorithm essentials, deep learning mathematics, the different data science tips, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn and upskill for free.